Welcome back everyone. We're here today to talk about how to boost big. So how to bring your jumping to the next level and go even higher. Let's get into it. I'm Evan Netch, we're here in Hatteras, North Carolina, and I wanna take you through jumping, but not necessarily just your basic jump, but how to go bigger and bigger, and what it takes to go higher. Um, I think jumping is what initially draws almost everyone to kiting. It's the wow factor, it's what everybody aspires to do, and, and for me, as many as years as I've been kiting, every year I come back here to Hatteras in the spring when it's super windy, and love just going big. And the longer you ride, the higher you can jump. So no matter what your skill level is, you can keep progressing your jumping. You can keep giving yourself a, a, a little scare by going higher and higher. And I think that's what draws, always draws everybody back to the roots of kiting on a twin tip, no matter how long you've been riding. So how do we do it? How do we go even higher? Whether you're stuck only jumping five feet or you're jumping 50 feet, but you still wanna go higher, how do you get higher? So First off, besides the obvious, I would say the obvious is more wind, more power equals you go higher. So let's just consider we have consistent wind. Every day we kite, we're on a nine meter kite. Nine meter kite, I would say, is kind of that, what a lot of people look at as the best size kite for just all around riding and jumping and kite loops and everything. So let's just say nothing changes. Every day it's always the same. 30 miles an hour, we're on a nine meter kite, nice and powered. How do we just go higher and higher given no other variables? And I would say the biggest thing is your timing. It's, there's three aspects of jumping, I think. And the first is your load and pop off the water with the board. You know, really, if you have a good pop, if you can jump well without moving the kite, let's call it doing wake style, that pop is really effective in jumping with the kite because it allows you to hold more power and allows you to get better, better spring off the water. The second thing would be that movement of the kite. How quickly do you flick the kite? How much lift can you generate with the kite? And the third thing would be your timing between those two aspects. How well can you time your load and pop off the water of your, your jumping ability with the board to your um, jumping ability, your, your loading, and your lift that you create with the kite. So we want to focus on the board, we want to focus on the kite, and then we want to focus on bringing those two aspects together. And I think that is what's going to allow you to go bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So first looking at the board, like how do you load the board? And I would say what you want to do is get as much board speed going as possible while maintaining control and take that forward speed and we're turning it into the wind. And the quicker we can take that forward speed and turn it into the wind is, is the harder we're driving up into the wind, which is the more lift we're gonna get. So the faster and the harder you can pop, the, the, bigger, the bigger you're gonna go, whether you are receiving lift from the kite or you're not receiving lift from the kite. So loading up on, 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 your, on your back foot, what I like to do when I'm riding is kind of just release a little bit of of, of pressure first before I really load. It's like loading up that spring on a trampoline. You're jumping, you're jumping, you're kind of relaxed, and then you really push hard. So, so for myself, sometimes I find, especially if I'm a little underpowered, I'll actually kind of do a little, couple little hops before my main load and release. And this does two things. One, it kind of breaks that surface tension of the board. It allows you to speed up and it allows you to really have as much um, momentum going into it to set that edge and pop. The second thing it does is taking off some of that consist, like when you, when you edge hard, you're, you have a lot of line tension. That's driving your kite forward in the wind window. Now, when you actually kind of let off that edge for a little bit, it's gonna work that kite deeper into the wind window. So by letting off your edge a little bit, you're actually allowing your kite to come deeper into the wind window, which is gonna give it more power for yourself to spring. So that, that load does kind of have an effect on, on the kite as well. But I, what I like to do is kind of release that edge and then really push hard with my back foot, pick my takeoff point, use a little piece of chop or anything as that, as that end goal of that point where I'm gonna re release from, 
load up as hard as I can off that back foot and, and, and pop off the water. Um, so your, 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 second, your second piece is, is the kite. And with the kite, like I mentioned, sometimes those little pre-releases, I think, help bring that kite deeper in the wind window to, to create more power to, to actually jump higher. But, but with the kite, we want to we wanna find the right kite height. So if your kite's really high and you don't send it far, you're going to get a nice amount of lift. You're not going to go very far downwind. It's not going to be a ton of power. It's not going to be a, an epic jump. If your kite's really low and you send the kite, you're going to get ripped forward and you're going to go really far downwind, but you're not going to go very high. And it's going to be very hard to hold that edge as you start, as you start sending the kite. So finding that sweet spot where the kite is, is low enough to really create a lot of power, but not so low, you can't, you can't hold that edge is key. So find that sweet spot. The sweet spot might be a little bit different for different, for different kite models, um, but find that sweet spot for, for where you can really, really turn that kite. Now, when I turn that kite, I turn it as quickly as possible. If you turn that kite slow, you're gonna get that same, that same power is gonna be less power for one, but it's gonna move slower and you're gonna have to hold that edge longer before you release it. Where if you flick that kite faster, it creates more lift, creates more power, and it happens quicker, so you can load your edge quicker and then and then go higher. Um, I also try to always have my kite on 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 full on full power. A kite you're going to be able to jump way higher. I, I believe on say an eight meter that's on full power than like a nine or ten meter that's depowered. The kite's going to react faster. It's going to it's it, it's designed to ride more more powered up. It's it's going to respond better. It's it's going to create more lift. So. A bigger kite is not is not always the answer. Um, so so ride your kite full power, but I like to be pretty much as, she, as far sheeted out as I can be going into it, right as I start to turn my kite and sheet in on the bar. Now, if you're more sheeted out, that's more potential to sheet in, to sheet in and create more lift. So a kite that really depowers a lot will help you with this. Um, for instance, a wave kite. It depowers a lot, but it's not it's not high aspect. It doesn't have that same float. So if you take a kite like the Switchblade, it's a five strut kite. It's got a ton of depower. It's it's a higher aspect kite. It's it's going to actually dump more power when you sheet out, which means it's going to bring in more power when you sheet in. It's a flatter wing shape. It's going to create a lot of lift. It's going to jump absolutely huge. So look at a kite like the Switchblade that has that ability to spill a lot of power and gain a lot of power, which will help you create a ton of lift. And that's why I like to use a switchblade when I jump through everything that we have here in Hatteras, jumping over islands. For me, that kite is, it jumps the biggest and it's most importantly, the most consistent and reliable. So whether you're great at jumping or you're not great at jumping, you're gonna be able to jump higher because it's got that consistency. So even poor technique means a big jump and, gr and good technique means an even bigger jump. So your kite choice does make a huge difference. So. So that's the sending, that's the turning of the kite. Speed is key there, and with your loading and popping, speed and power is key there. Now it's just bringing the timing of those two together. You know, you don't wanna send your kite, then load, and now your kite's pulling you this way, and now you're loading, and it doesn't really work. Or you don't wanna load hard, and then, um, you know, send your kite, send your kite too late, because now you've killed all your forward speed and your momentum, and your kite sent, but your, your load happened you know, maybe a whole second ago or two seconds ago, and now you're kind of stalled. So that's what I see a lot. I see people, when, when, when they're loading, they, they load really, I'd say more often people load their board too soon. They edge hard, edge, and they're loading, they're trying to pop, and then they turn the kite and then they try to jump, but now it's kind of over. You miss, you miss your chance. So you really want to, for me, I really, there is always a little delay in your kite. I always kind of send the kite and edge hard, almost at that same, sec same second, knowing that from the time I pull my kite to the time that kite reacts is, I don't know, half of a second. And in that same half a second, that's when I'm loading hard and shooting myself into the wind. So it happens really, really quickly. So bringing the timing of those two together is gonna allow you to create more lift and go higher and therefore jump bigger. So now just, we're gonna dive real quick into when you're in the air. You know, how do I go bigger? I'm already up in the air. Now I'm higher than I expected, or, or what do I do when I'm in the air to, to keep making that jump bigger and bigger, and, and how do I control myself? 
So I'd say once, once you're in the air, if you, if you do jump really big, you don't want to start redirecting too early. So send the kite, jump. When you're, when you're in the air, kind of sheet in. I don't sheet all the way in, but I kind of sheet in quite a lot. Hold that power in, hold that kite nice and steady, glide for as long as you want to. And especially on a really big jump, then you're gonna to wanna to redirect your kite really late. So I try to come in and right before I touch down, especially if it's windier and I'm on a smaller kite, I might even redirect my kite really aggressively, but just maybe sometimes just inches or a foot before I hit the water. What you don't wanna do is redirect that kite way too early, get pulled in and then you land really hard. So just keep the kite nice and high over your head, steady, smooth, redirect that kite late for, for, a, nice, for a nice soft landing. But make sure you redirect the kite. You don't wanna come in and just hit the water with the kite still over your head. That's when you swing under the kite, you hit the water, and the kite falls out of the sky. So redirect the kite, but I always find the later you redirect it, the more aggressive you have to be with it. Um, in later videos, I'm gonna dive into as well some more advanced kite flying technique in the air when you're, when you're jumping big, whether that's steering yourself directionally in the air left and right, or even, or even some heli loops. So, I hope this was helpful. Please leave some comments below in terms of what you'd like to hear, what you thought was helpful, or, or what maybe we were missing in the video. Um, so until next time, thanks for joining us and hope to see you back here again in the future.